So the world of e-bike hub motors is broadly divided into geared hub motors and direct drive motors. And in any pros and cons comparing those two things, you learn that geared hub motors freewheel. That means that when you're riding the bike without using the motor, the hub is able to spin freely without turning the motor inside it, so that there's no parasitic drag caused by the motor that would potentially be noticeable by the rider. That's an advantage when you're riding the bike without assistance, but it's a big disadvantage if one of the reasons for getting a hub motor is your desire to have regenerative braking. As soon as you have a freewheel in the system, the motor is no longer able to apply a backwards braking force on the wheel in order to assist with your braking, nor can it run the motor in reverse if you wanted reverse mode. Now, up until this point, most companies have felt that that is a positive trade-off for an e-bike. Most people would prefer to have a freewheeling system than dealing with a little bit of extra drag and having the benefits of regen. We disagree. Uh, we've been big advocates of direct drive motors for a long time, not just because of their ruggedness and simplicity, but it also because regen is a huge advantage to electric assist systems. And there's absolutely no reason that geared hub motors can't have this benefit as well. We've demonstrated this firsthand with the release of our GMAC hub motor, which is a powerful geared motor that is regen capable without a freewheel. But we want to broadly expand that to the entire lineup of geared motors that we sell. In this video here, we're going to show how you can modify an off the shelf freewheeling geared motor in order to make it regen capable. We're hoping at Grin to offer an expanded lineup of motors with this capability, but in the meantime, it's a modification that can be done by the more adventuresome do-it-yourselfers. So here I've got three off-the-shelf geared hub motors that we're going to modify this way. It's a smaller Shengi SX motor on the left, the more powerful easy geared front motor in the middle, and then we've got the Bafang Fat Bike G62 motor on the right, which is the most recent addition to our geared motor lineup. All of these motors are, in principle, regen capable. There's some geared motors where you can't do this, and that would be motors that have a helical gear with a thrust bearing. You'll see this in, for instance, the Bafang G311 motors, where the action of the gears puts a thrust that is blocked by a thrust bearing. If you reverse the torque, there is no reverse thrust bearing, and you could damage the motor if you were to lock the clutch. In general, any motor that you disassemble, if it has straight cut gears, then in principle, you would be able to run that as a regen motor. Now, we're going to do this in two different ways. On the easy motor, it happens that we've been able to secure and source a supply of planetary gear assemblies that don't have a clutch in them. So your standard easy motor clutch looks like this, and in the middle, I can spin it freely in one direction, but it locks itself in the other direction. The locked clutch version, well, it's not really a locked clutch. It is just the exact same piece of metal with no clutch, and that way it has no means of rotation. Now, for the Bafang G62 motor and for the Shengi motor, there is no supply of planet carriers without a clutch this way. Here, for instance, is the Bafang G62. It's the same as the G60. Um, you're able to source this quite readily, but you can't source one that is not intrinsically freewheeling. Fortunately, you can disable that freewheeling quite easily if you have access to welding equipment. So what we're going to do in this video is actually weld the clutches on those two motors and just do a swap on the easy motor. Now, when it comes to welding the clutches, there's two ways you could go about doing this. One approach would be to fully disassemble the motor, remove the planet carrier assembly, remove the planet gears, strip it down, soak it in a solvent in order to wash out all the grease that's inside there, and then have a nice clean surface to weld. Be very careful while you're welding it not to destroy the surface and then reassemble the motor. Uh, you can do that, but it's time consuming. And we found that a slightly more ghetto but viable approach is just to weld the clutches in situ inside the motor. You have to be a bit more careful not to damage anything with some errant uh, welding arcs or debris flying. It allows the clutch to be welded with a minimum amount of disassembly and reassembly time, and it eliminates any chance that you won't be able to reinsert the planet carrier back on the axle. So we'll start with the easy motor. You can see now it freewheels readily in this direction. Spin it the other way, and I've got the motor drag, so I'm spinning it. Uh, so we will remove the side plate. Okay, so now the planetary gears are on this side. And so in most of these motors, the planet carrier is held on to the axle with a snap ring. Uh, so you will need a set of snap ring pliers in order to pull that off. Okay, helps to buy better quality snap ring pliers than that piece of shit. Um, so that just slides off effortlessly. Really important when you slide that off not to lose the key stock, because uh, the key stock is critical to prevent this from rotating. So in this case, we simply have a drop-in replacement planet assembly that doesn't have a freewheel, 
all we have to do is slide this on, line up the key with the key stock, make sure that the gears are meshed to the planet sun gear before you push it in, on it goes. We reinsert the snap ring, make sure it's snapped on, ta-da, the motor goes back in its shell. And again, make sure that the gears line up, the side plate goes on the side. Now, easy peasy, I'm spinning the motor that way, I'm spinning the motor that way. No more freewheeling, we have a region capable motor. Now we're gonna transition to one that's a bit more challenging where we don't have access to a non-freewheeling planet carrier and that's gonna be the Shengyi SX motor. So the Shengyi motor also disassembles quite nicely like the front easy hub. Uh, So here is the planetary gear, absolutely covered in grease. Uh, it slid right off the axle when I was disassembling it. I'm going to put it back on here because my goal is to weld it when it's in place and that way there's no chance of my welding causing a distortion that makes it hard to then fit back on. Um, and I'm going to try to avoid getting any grease in this area where I'm going to be welding it. And in fact, we're just going to get a paper towel or cloth and clean that up as best we can. If you notice, if you look closely here, there's a very small uh, width rubber O-ring that's on the axle and that seals the ball bearing axle interface from water ingress. That would totally disintegrate if we left it in place when we put our weld bead here. Uh, so we're gonna remove that. Um, otherwise, you can see when I activate this, the plate here rotates when the key in the inside is locked. Um, and so our goal is to weld this steel plate on the surface of the clutch assembly to the central core that has a key stock in it. Uh, so a few points, when you have a motor open and disassembled like this in a metal shop environment, you have to be extremely aware of the fact that there's very powerful rare earth magnets in the motor that will attract every and any piece of iron in the vicinity. Uh, so make sure that you're not in a space where there's small little chips of steel, because uh, if those find themselves stuck between the stator and magnets in your motor, you're going to get all kinds of scraping noises and possibly damaged wires. Um, needless to say, you want to keep foreign objects from getting inside the motor where you have the motor open and exposed. Uh, so now I'm going to attempt to weld this. Uh, I'm using a TIG welder. Uh, presumably you could use a stick welder as well. I am no expert at welding. I'm not going to give any welding tips at all because I'm feeling I'm out of my element to try to give advice and I would trust you would have the expertise to pull this off if you're going to tackle it. Mm -hmm. There you can see, not the prettiest thing in the world, but I did a series of tack welds around the perimeter there. I didn't let the heat dwell any too long in any one spot uh, because then you will totally burn up and vaporize all the grease and oils that's inside the clutch and you risk damaging some of the plastic or other materials. Um, but this looks functional. Uh, we're gonna wait for it to cool down a bit, slip the O-ring back over the axle, uh, reassemble the motor and then make sure everything spins freely and we didn't cause any distortion. Nothing scraping, nothing ticking, no, sometimes you spin the motor and you find it really binds in certain locations. Um, so all of those are signs that you might have had debris come in or that you had some distortion, but no, nope, this is spinning smooth as can be, forwards and backwards, no free will, plenty of regen. On to the next one. So the last hub that we're going to lock the clutch on this way is the Bafang G62 fat bike motor. Now fat bikes already have a lot of intrinsic drag when you pedal them because they're running large, wide, low pressure knobby tires. So you're barely gonna notice the extra drag from having no freewheel, but you're certainly gonna notice the massive benefits of regenerative braking, especially in a powerful motor like this. Uh, this is normally a thousand watt motor from Bafang, so the region capabilities are quite strong, similar to the GMAC that we offer. Uh, so one last time, we'll open this up and weld the clutch. 
So this is really kind of identical to the Shangyi motor, but even easier. There's no O-ring to take off the axle. Um, and it's, as you see, all of these clutches have a very similar kind of look with a metal plate that spins and then a central collar in the middle that's tied to the shaft of the key stock. And we're simply gonna tack weld the spinning plate to that collar so that it can no longer spin. So once again, not the prettiest thing, but that looks like a weld that's gonna hold up. And now we'll put it back together and make sure it spins fine. Okay. Um. So once again, do the spin test. It's good. Uh, so there we have it. Three freewheeling geared motors converted into non-freewheeling regen capable geared motors. Now I'm going to talk about the caveats on this. Uh, that conversion was fairly straightforward. The more challenging bit is actually going to be integrating this back on your bicycle. If you were just to reinstall these motors on a bike, add a nice powerful regen capable motor controller like the Phase Runner, you would probably find that within five to ten minutes of biking that your axle nuts are really loose, Maybe even your axle will spin out inside the torque arm and fall out of the bike frame. And that's because these standard axles that are 12 millimeters in diameter with 10 millimeter flats, they don't have a lot of purchasing power. And when you don't have regen, the axle will always twist to the point that it bottoms out in your torque arm and in your dropout, and then it stays there. But now that we've added regen, the axle is going to keep twisting counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise, and clockwise. There's always a little bit of wiggle no matter how well you install it, and that wiggle will eventually loosen up the nut. So I can't emphasize enough how important it is that you use a locking torque arm on this axle, something that pinches it to ensure there's no wiggle at all. There's not many options on the market for this, but at Grin we have a new lineup of regen torque arms that you can see in one of the following videos. Alternately, in a pinch, you can sometimes get away having two torque arms, one on the left, one on the right, that you pre-stress in opposite directions. So one is pre-tension clockwise, the other counterclockwise, and then you can lock the right So it's now been a little over four months since we filmed that video on how to lock the clutches in geared motors to achieve regen. And I wanted to address the issue of the planet carriers being able to rock a bit back and forth. And in some of the motors, especially those with fairly small diameter axles, there's quite a substantial torque on that keyway. And we found that this problem can be quite disconcerting. What you, have, what you notice while riding the bike is a little bit of play every time you switch between accelerating and doing regen. And you feel that as this little thunk or clicking sound in the motor. And if the regen intensity is too strong, that can get worse and worse over time uh, to the point that the planet carrier can have a substantial amount of back and forth motion and you actually get the risk of metal shearing off and breaking inside the motor. So we're going to cover now is a technique that will actually fully secure the planet carrier against that kind of motion. And we recommend doing this if you are doing a lock clutch motor and you want to maximize the torque you can get from it or if you've been riding a system with this lock clutch and you've noticed that play and you've been feeling it get worse and worse over time. And the simple solution to do this is a retaining compound. Now we've done tests with four different products on the market and we found that Loctite 648 uh, lives up to Loctite's reputation and gave us the absolute greatest strength when we're trying to make two cylindrical parts and have them become bonded together. So in order to prevent planet carrier play from developing in the first place, all we need to do is thoroughly clean the surface of the axle where the carrier goes, as well as the inside uh, hub of the lock clutch mechanism, and then apply this retaining compound to that surface before we reassemble the motor. This will then cure and form an incredibly strong joint anchoring these two things together. Now that will mean in the future, if you do want to remove the planet gears to replace them for some reason, you then have to actually heat this up with a heat gun in order to weaken that joint before you'll be able to pull it off. But otherwise, it is still removable and serviceable even with this bonding agent applied. So after welding the planet carriers, uh, you usually find that the hub is distorted enough that it doesn't slide on and off very freely. Uh, so we recommend using a reamer that matches the diameter. In this case, it's a 13 millimeter axle and actually reaming out the hole so that you ensure you have a nice slip fit of the hub over top of the axle. Uh, so we want to make sure we cover the entire mating surface with the Loctite 648. Um, and, uh, but we want to avoid, of course, getting some spilt inside the center of the motor where it actually needs to spin because we don't want to lock the 
um, the motor itself from rotating. So I like to do this with the motor oriented horizontally so it tends to not drip down and get inside the motor mechanism. Get a bit of that in the key area too. Um, and then we'll similarly put a Loctite on all the inside surface of the planet carrier. Mm -hmm. oh, that's okay. Go. So this will fully cure in about 24 hours. It's important not to jump the gun and start riding before that, or it will, of course, slip back and forth while you do regen before this has had a chance to set up. Um, you can speed that up by putting it in an oven, and, uh, but at the end of the day, this will then permanently lock this planet carrier to the axle and ensure the smoothest possible transition between forward thrust and regen braking.